A young black woman saved millions of lives, but there's a dark side to this story. In 1951, 31-year-old Henrietta Lacks noticed a lump in her abdomen. At the Johns Hopkins Hospital in Baltimore, she was diagnosed with advanced cervical cancer. And although she sadly passed away from her cancer later that year, her cells lived on. The doctors who were treating her had taken cancer cells from her cervix without her consent and without her knowledge. He passed these cells on to Dr. Otto Gay, a cancer scientist working in the same hospital. What he found shocked him. Unlike normal human cells which died off after a few generations of division, Henrietta's cells kept dividing without stopping. They were immortal cells. They never died and no one knows why. He named these special cells HeLa cells after the first two letters of her name, Henrietta Lacks. These cells helped develop the polio vaccine, IVF, helping us with a COVID vaccine and thousands more. The tragedy here is that her cells were taken without her consent. Her family were never compensated. And for years, she was not credited or recognized. Best Black History. Let's talk about Alex Haley. He was known as an author for writing books about African-American generations. But here's what's interesting. Haley traced his family roots all the way back to Africa, where his ancestors lived. Here's how it happened. Alex searched through archives and records for how long are you? This mug took me a decade. Dang. When he finally found his ancestors' land, he listened to the storyteller tell of his ancestor, Kutak Kutak, as he was taken from Africa to slavery. Alex documented his family's journey all the way through freedom in his book, Roots. To write accurately, Alex recreated the passage the slaves took to America, spending nights on the ship sleeping on a board. Take a minute and think about that. Roots was developed into a miniseries depicting African-American history in a way that was never seen before. Alex Haley's journey taught generations of people. So remember your roots, and Black history is your history. Wait a minute. What's going on? You haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel yet. Nah, no, that's not okay. Let's go and fix this right now. Go on. What are you waiting for? Don't worry. I'll wait for you. Thank you. Welcome to Black History Fast Facts, where every day in February I give you a fact about black history you might not have known. Today's fast fact, Rosa Parks wasn't the first person to refuse to give up her seat on the bus. That title belongs to Claudette Colvin. Actually, that's not entirely true either. Dozens of people actually refused to give up their seat beforehand, but for the most part they were quietly fined and forgotten. Claudette Colvin was the first person to challenge the law and take the case to court. On March 2, 1955, then 15-year-old Claudette Colvin was asked to give up her seat for a white woman as she rode home from school on the bus. She refused, and as a result, was arrested. Nine months later, Rosa Parks did the same thing, and her arrest made her the face of the Montgomery bus boycotts and the face of the NAACP. So the question becomes, why do we know about Rosa Parks and not Claudette Colvin? The answer is that the NAACP did not see her as the right person for the job. According to Colvin, it was because she was too young, too emotional, too militant, too dark-skinned, and too nappy-headed to be the face of the movement. And when she got pregnant shortly thereafter, she was essentially erased from history. Colvin's case proves that while we've made a lot of progress, we still have a long way to go. And that's your Black History Fast Fact. Did you know George Washington had slaves? Let's talk about one in particular. On a judge was George Washington's house slave. He was forced to work hours on empty, doing chores for his wife. However, one day when they weren't watching, on a judge snuck on a boat and escaped. Washington spent years trying to get people to recollect her, but they never caught her. And Anna Judge died a free woman. In honor of Black History Month, I'm creating a little series I'm calling Badass Things in Black History, where I cover some lesser known awesome things that happened with Black people in Black history. My first episode is about Mary Beatrice Davidson Kenner. Mary was born to a family of inventors in Monroe, North Carolina, May 17th, 1912. And when I say family, I mean her entire family. Her father was a notable inventor, so was her grandfather and her sister. Mary invented a lot of different things, but her first patent was for the sanitary belt. She first invented this in 1920. However, she couldn't afford the patent at the time. 
Mary's sanitary belt was designed to prevent leakage of the menstrual blood onto women's clothing. Several companies declined to work with her because she was black. However, she still holds the record for the most patents awarded to a black woman. I don't scoop ice cream with a fork. Do you? Hi, I'm Alex and welcome to Undercover Inventions, where in celebration of Black History Month, I will be discussing black inventors who created items that we benefit from every single day. Today we are talking about Alfred L. Crail. Crail was born in Florida in 1866, just right after the Civil War had ended. At a young age, he was sent to Washington, D.C. to attend Wayland Seminary, a school to help educate African Americans after the Civil War. He then settled in Pittsburgh, where he served as a porter in a drugstore and a hotel. Alfred noticed that servers at the hotel had trouble with ice cream sticking to the serving spoon, so he developed an ice cream scoop. It was an ice cream scoop with a built-in scraper to allow for one-handed operation. On June 10, 1896, Alfred applied for a patent on his invention. Alfred's functional design is reflected in modern ice cream scoops. And that's why... Here are three Black History documentaries that you've got to watch this Black History Month. First up is the Black Power mixtape, available for free on YouTube. This film will radicalize you. It explores the complexities of the fledgling Black Power movement from 1967 to 1965. Next up is They've Gotta Have Us, available on Netflix. This film is about the way black people around the world have found and made their place in the movie industry. It features some of my favorite figures in film, John Singleton, Spike Lee, Debbie Allen, Harry Belafonte, and many more. You'll love it. Last but not least is I Am Not Your Negro, available on Netflix. This one's so good, I'm just going to play a part of the trailer for you. If any white man in the world says, give me liberty or give me death, the entire white world applauds when a black man says exactly the same thing. He is judged a criminal and treated like one, and everything possible is done to make an example of this bad nigger so there won't be any more like him. And of course, like and follow for more. I mean, you knew this was coming. Don't act like you didn't know this was coming. <laughs> but anyway, things you didn't learn about Black History Month, part one. So before the Civil War, some psychiatrists diagnosed slaves with what they called drapedomania. What drapedomania is, is a mental illness in which the slave has a strong desire for freedom and a tendency to try to escape. So in order to treat it, they would either cut off one foot or both feet of the slaves in order to prevent them from escaping because then it would rid them of this irrational desire. However, because they were cutting off the feet of the slaves, they now no longer had resale value. And because of this, it would cause the slaves to lose all of their value to the slave owners and they were killed immediately after every single time. Here we have Her Majesty the King. What type of gay sh- Yup, there was a queer Egyptian king. Sadly, she was murdered after her death. What? 3,000 years ago, Egyptian king Tutmos II died. His son was next to become the king, but he was a baby. So instead, Hatshepsut, who was Tutmosis II's wife and mother of Tutmosis III, took the throne. She didn't want the title of queen or regent. She chose to declare herself as king, then presented herself with a fake beard, male headdress, and changed her name to the male version of her name. But she still used she, her pronouns, referring to herself as her majesty, the king. She was one of the best pharaohs to ever live. She grew the economy, was an iconic builder, and strengthened the military, all without bloodshed. The community loved her. Then she got murdered, kind of. Stay tuned for part two. If you took away all the inventions and discoveries ever made by Black Americans, I am a hero of Trinidad and Tobago, like a blast from the past. Six point two five mile run. Why do some people look so cute when they run? I mean, I've got my. Move, bitch! Get out my fucking way! It's Black History Month. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Bye.